What's up everybody, this is Chris and this is my channel Barnon 11970 Thank you for taking the time to check out this video. And I have a question for you guys. I want to see what you would do in this scenario. So pay attention to what I'm going to say and then you could leave your comments in the comment section before I tell you what it really is about. So we're going to do the honor system here. So when I say the question and tell you when to make a comment, pause the video and type in the comment what you would have done in the scenario I'm about to present. And then afterwards, listen to what happens afterwards and then see from there. So not everybody's going to do that, but hopefully some will. So let's put yourself in a scenario of the Civil War. Let's say you are part of the 41st Congress. The war is already over and there are millions, if not billions of dollars worth of damage. Now, this is back in the 1800s where you could basically feed your family on a dollar and that would cover a family of 12 for about a week. So you realize as Congress, you will not be able to come up with the money to be able to pay all of these bills and all the damages. And you risk the country going bankrupt, knowing full well that when countries are financially bankrupt, other countries will come in and either buy it or take it. So you ultimately are responsible of a way to try and save the country from basically being destroyed. You can't come up with the money. And then all of a sudden, England comes over, the Bank of London for, for more specific reasons, comes to you as one of the congressmen in the 41st Congress after the Civil War is done, and basically gives you a sales pitch and says, okay, I see the trouble that you're in. I see that you just had an internal struggle. You are damaged beyond your capacity to repair it and could lose everything. And they'll use fear and they'll say things like, well, France and Spain and Germany and all these other countries would love to take back your land. But I'm going to help you from ever having that happen. I will loan you get that word, I will loan you the money to not only pay all the damages and pay all of your bills, but you will have enough money for you and your family's great, great, great grandchildren to live off of for the rest of your life. And all we ask for is of the giant sized country you have called the United States, which was once called the Union States of America, all we want is 10 square miles of property. And that's it. But you can't tell anybody. So you'll get all the money you need. You will be able to keep your country, be seen as a savior, because your people will be pretty excited to know that they're not about to lose their country and then all of a sudden be divided up by every nation that comes in. And you will be wealthy and your family will be wealthy beyond all your wildest dreams. What would you do? What would you have done? If you worked for Congress and you knew your country was about to go bankrupt and, and you were about to lose your country and be the one, go down in history as the Congress that lost the country and you were presented a golden ticket, so to speak, where all of the things I mentioned about them giving you all the money you need and all you have to do in return is give them 10 square miles of property and not say anything, what would you do? So I want you to pause this video. Tell me what you would do. Okay. So I'm assuming you paused the video and left a comment of what you would do if you were in that scenario. Well, if you look up the Act of 1871, and I've talked about this. If you've come here from the video that I did, The Truth About the United States Law and You, there's a lot of crazy stuff, but truth is stranger than fiction. It all boils down to this particular event in our U.S. history. And that also shows that the Civil War was done on purpose and not the way you were told. But we're not even going to focus on that. But the Act of 1871, the 41st Congress on February 21st, 1871, decided we don't want to lose the country. So we'll take your loan. We'll give you 10 square miles of the country because after all, how many millions of square miles is there in North America, in the United States? 10 square miles of it 
It's like saying, here, you have $10 billion, give me a nickel. So they did it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that 10 square miles is known now, or probably and was known then, but is known as Washington, D.C. So Washington, D.C. was given as collateral to the Bank of London to keep us from going bankrupt. Now, if you know anything about debts and loans, you have to pay them back. And if you don't pay them back, they take things. And you also have to pay back interest. So think of it this way. When you borrow beyond your means and you couldn't buy, pay anything beforehand, how are you going to pay it back plus interest if you couldn't do it before? So our country was about to go bankrupt. The Bank of London didn't say, here, we're giving you this money. It said, we're loaning it to you, which means interest that they had to pay back. In 1933, we went bankrupt because we couldn't pay that loan. And the only collateral that the United States had is its citizens. Now, you'll notice between 1871 and 1933, try and find the word citizen. I don't know exactly when it was created. Well, actually, no, I'm sorry, I do. It was in right, af right, right after the Act of 1871. So it was actually around 1874, I believe, where the term citizen just happened to come out. And that is where, if you look up the word citizen under legal definitions, sorry, I had a brain freeze there that I forgot. It's been a while. Um, when you look under legal definitions, the 13th Amendment, talks about legalized slavery, and they also, if you look up the legal definition of the word citizen, you become a property corporation. Now, when I was talking about the 10 square miles of the United States, well, of District of Columbia, basically they were tricked. The Congress was tricked because they're thinking, oh, we only have to give 10 square miles, and anybody living in that 10 square mile radius is part of the corporation known as the United States. A corporation is nothing more than a name registered and trademarked, bought and paid for. It's no building, it's no office, it's nothing material. It's a, it's a word on a piece of paper. That's what a corporation is. So the United States of America, located in the Washington, D.C. area, is nothing but a foreign country owned by the Bank of London due to foreclosure on that loan and bankruptcy. It's not part of the United States. Well, it's not part of what we fought for in the American Revolution. Now, to be part of the jurisdiction of that corporation outside of that 10 square mile radius, you had to check a box when you went to get a driver's license, birth certificate, registered to vote. There's a box. The first thing that they ever ask you is, are you a U.S. citizen? Now, if you know anything about the 13th Amendment, it talks about involuntary servitude. That's what slavery is. But if you can volunteer your servitude, then it doesn't apply. So when they ask you, are you a U.S. citizen, and you assume what that is, because remember, ignorance of the law is no excuse, you volunteer your servitude by checking yes. So they're assuming you know what the words are, you know what the definitions are, the meaning of it. Otherwise, why would you sign something you don't understand? Now, the catch is, they don't give you full disclosure. So if actually the people in this country actually took the United States Corporation to court, well, it probably wouldn't work, but if people stood up and actually told out loud to the world that we were not given full disclosure of the things that we signed, there is protection. But no, the reason that we don't have anything is because they're not going to give it to us. But when you check that box, you now become part of the jurisdiction of that 10 square mile radius, which means you don't actually have to live in that 10 square, 10 square miles. Just like if you wanted to be a uh, a member of, let's just say, the NRA. Let's just say the NRA is located in California, just for argument's sake, and you live in New Jersey. Well, if you want to be part of the NRA, all you have to do is send them money. They'll send you a membership card. You are now under their jurisdiction, so to speak. You don't have to move to California to be part of it. So the way they trick everyone is to register. You become part of property. You become a legalized corporate name. Your name itself, the, the thing written on a piece of paper, is the corporation. So when people have told you, if you've seen other videos where they say you're a corporation, they don't mean you physically. They mean you as your name, your identification. 
your social security number. It's a registration number, like how you register a product. That's why you have a certificate of birth. Well, ships used to bring in things with a certificate of birth, B-E-A-R-T-H. It had a registration number, country of origin, and manufacturer. Well, your manufacturers are your parents. They created you. Country of origin, United States of America Corporation. Your registration number is your social security number. Your name is a registered trademark located in the District of Columbia, and you don't have to live there. So, when people understand and comprehend what's really going on, you can make the change. No politician will ever tell you because they get paid lots of money to look the other way. And when they do speak up, a.k.a. Abraham Lincoln, a.k.a. John F. Kennedy, you see what happens. So when people learn the real truth and comprehend what's going on and what's been pulled out from under you, it should make you angry enough to want to change it. Because remember, I say these videos, it's all about choice. So when it comes to the U.S. military, I know everybody wants to wave the flags and they don't want to seem, oh, you're not patriotic. But if you are in the military or have family that is in the military, they are not the same military as the militia that we had back in the American Revolution. They won't tell you who you're fighting for. You're not fighting for the country. You are fighting for the corporation known as the United States, which is owned by the British Crown. Now, you could sit here and say, this is crazy. You could sit here and say, I, I don't believe it. Well, your belief and your emotions are irrelevant to truth. Go look it up and find out. Find out about the United States going bankrupt in 1933, which is also the first year of the income tax, if I am not mistaken. If I am, please correct me. But I know there was another crucial thing in 1933. It's also the year they um, supposedly outlawed gold because that was the only commodity they had left outside of people. That's why this country, what do we manufacture besides debt, Wall Street stocks and military weapons. What do we create in this country anymore? Everything's shipped over to China, which, by the way, don't they own our debt? So this one's a little bit different than the ones I've done a couple of days from now, uh, a couple of days ago. But this is something, especially for newer people who are not at the level to understand some of the other stuff. Because sometimes when you go to school, you got to start at kindergarten and you got to work your way up. Nothing wrong with that. That's how, that's how you learn. You got to start in the beginning. You know, you can't learn you know, quantum physics until you learn basic math. So don't be ashamed about that because people are at different levels and that's okay. But if you're here and you're still listening, then you're willing to learn and you're willing to research and you're willing to expand your mind and you're willing to grow, which makes change possible. So if the American people, and I'm part of the American people, understood what is really happening and what you're not being told, you wouldn't have to complain and pick it anymore. You could just change it because for the Constitution, the fake one that was redone in 1871, and I'm sure changed ever since 1933, the reason it exists is because it is basically the will of the people. It exists because we don't challenge it, but can change as soon as the majority say, wait a minute, we're awakened to your scam. We no longer want it. it. doesn't make you patriotic. Because like I was saying about the military people, and my father was a major in, in the army, and my grandfather on both sides of my family fought in World War II. But they weren't fighting for the country. They weren't fighting for the people. They were fighting for the corporation so they could make more profit because wars are profitable. That's why banks loan to both sides. Because they love loaning money because they know if you're borrowing money, it means you didn't have the money to begin with. So if you couldn't buy what you borrowed the money for in the beginning, how are you going to pay back the loan plus the extra interest on top of it? You don't think they know that? You don't think they want to sucker people in with what they call free money? Nothing is free, at least in this regime. So if you're fighting in the military or have family or friends in the military, I hate to tell you, but you're fighting for the corporation known as the United States, which is located in Washington, D.C., which is owned by the British Crown and the Bank of London, a.k.a. Rothschilds. If that makes you angry, well, research it and prove me wrong.
I would love to be mistaken about this stuff. I would love for this to all be untrue. So your emotions are irrelevant. Prove it wrong. And if you can't, then that means you learned something different than what you were told. Because isn't that what propaganda is all about? And then you'll have to question the very people that you applaud as to why they never told you and why there are no poor politicians. They get paid very well to sell out their citizens. That's why they call you citizens. Look up the legal definition of the word citizen, and then you will find out who you really are to them. You are property. You are collateral. So they can live a very lavish lifestyle. And we allow it because we don't want to learn. We don't want to know. That's a choice. I hope you make a different one. So hopefully this helped understand what some of the other deeper stuff would scare most people away on. Because I stayed away from the deeper levels. Because it goes deeper and deeper and deeper. But we're going to just stick with the basics here. So hopefully some of you actually paused the video at that point and then left what you would have done. And then the rest of you that are still here listening, thank you, by the way, actually will take the time to research the things I speak of. Because knowledge is power. And they don't want smart people. They want people smart enough to operate their machines, but never smart enough to question why. And we wonder why things are not getting better. But we can fix it when you guys are ready. Thanks for watching. I hope I'll see you next time.